also understand the fact that there are a lot of people around the world who are very skeptical about the vaccine uh, and its ineffectiveness. And now with the number of high doses which you are, which you are expected to take, that theory is going to fly high with them saying, look, look, it's not working, that kind of a, a approach. Um, are we looking at multiple more doses as we go on because um, we need to understand the economics of things as well. Um, countries are coming to a point, especially in this part of the world, uh, in Africa and all, still most of the countries even haven't received their first dose. Absolutely. It is expensive for them. So multiple doses going on and on and on, that is going to completely hit their economies. Um, so the scientific community, for them, it's easy to say, uh, take, 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 take. But then if you do not have the money or the necessary arrangements uh, in order to take that vaccine, and if it is impacting, like, the, the choice has now become uh, a professor, are you going to die out of hunger? Are you going to die out of, uh, you know, poverty? Or are you going to die because of COVID? Yeah. So it's not a choice. It's either way you are going to get hammered. Yeah, yeah. So in an instant like that, how effective is asking people continuously take the vaccine, take the vaccine, take, because it's not available free yeah, yeah. Uh, around the world. There's a cost. Yeah. So do you think, like, do you all predict, do you all understand uh, in the future also, will we, will we be talking about take the fifth one, the sixth one, the seventh one? Or very, 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 I think very appropriate and very good questions, which... Uh, and there are several sort of directions to look at this. I'm, so if you take a condition like whooping cough, et cetera, that we have, I mean, you do need multiple vaccines, right? At least four doses you need when you're a child and then you need another booster. So that is not, that is not something that is sort of new to, uh, to uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus or uh, the, uh, SARS the new virus. So it has been something seen before. Influenza, we give it every year because the influenza virus mutates and there's, there's variation. What has been predicted when it comes to COVID or SARS-CoV-2 virus is most likely people would need a top up of their immune responses every two years. It would be great if it's every three years or it may come down to every year with the influenza that, vaccine. If I understand right, what you're saying is every individual who got their vaccine, who got their uh, second dose, the third dose, it'll come to a point that every year, like uh, uh, the normal influenza shot, which is given uh, in the Western Hemisphere, um, we may have We to may have to, but again, that has to be qualified because, you know, we cannot go around vaccinating all people in the world every six months. That is not practical. As you say, there are other economic considerations. It's not only vaccinating. So you have to start targeting your populations, right? You have to target the people who have been, who are having the complications, the severe complications of COVID. Say, if you have to make a decision between a 20-year-old who is otherwise completely yeah. healthy and a seven or 60-year-old patient with cancer, that's the group you will target. So it will come into a more targeted population. And that is why if you looked at a lot of the vaccination program, started with the oldest group, came down, then you get got in. So it may come to a situation, if you are in this specific group, say cancer, immune deficiency, you may have to get it every year. Other people may have to get it every Just four change, years, change exactly. That, that's, a, that's all, they may not have to get it at all because their immunity may last.